Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the UCLA Library and uh, to this event to talk about digital humanities. And I would like to get these slides a little bit dimmed. Magic. <laughs> they call it technology, but I keep thinking it's magic. <laughs> um, if you would ask a humanities professor, what are your data? Then most humanities professors will say, data? I don't have data. Uh, if you say, what kind of information do you generate or work with? They'll say, oh, yes, information. Well, uh, uh, I compare different text versions, I uh, describe art, I theorize the spatial layout uh, as an expression of power, etc. So yes, information they have, data they don't. Now what digital humanities does is make a kind of translation between information as something that is quite general to data that is much more specific and that can be handled in a very different way, that can be handled with computers, that can be visualized in different ways, with which you can play. Uh, and what digital humanities allows us to do is to do much more with information than we could do ever before. Now, I'm not going to give you a definition further of digital humanities, um, we organize this evening so that you can just go out and explore. You can see for yourself what this is all about. Um, we are in information age. Uh, we talk about the cloud. Now that's interesting, right? The cloud actually is a building with lots of cooling uh, and many, many computers. But nobody really likes to think of it like that. We think about this comparison. Uh, it's a very humanities way of dealing with a complex thing, the cloud. What you will see and hear tonight is a, a number of examples of the kind of work that we're doing and also why we're doing this. Uh, because humanities wouldn't be the humanities if there wouldn't be a critical edge to it, a, a way to really think through uh, the information that we're dealing with and the way we're dealing with it. You will hear from Kara Cooney, a professor of Egyptology, who will tell you about her work and the horrible problems she stumbled into <laughs> before she actually went digital. Um, and that's really what this term immersive humanities is about. The term has been keyed by Dave Shepard, who is here, and he will... Yeah, Dave, stand up. Yeah. And applaud him in scene. Uh, but he actually has managed to make a uh, first working prototype of uh, what promises to be a great thing. Because I don't need a crystal ball to figure out that the future will be in three dimensions. The future is really about thinking of our reality in, in a way that we can approximate in 3D. Uh, we have 3D movies, we have video games, we have all kinds of things. And I'm not talking about immersive humanities as a way to lose yourself into a different reality, but as a way to find information. That is what tonight is about. Uh, we will talk with uh, three people who graduated from the Digital Humanities program. Uh, Miriam Posner, who is teaching Digital Humanities here, will explain what she's doing and why. Uh, but we start with a story by Mike Karen. He was here last year. And um, Mike is a critical kind of guy, humanities background, that's what you get. Mm. And he didn't know what digital humanities were, but he was intrigued, and I hope you're intrigued. Um, over the year, he has been really thinking about this, contemplating, and, and he'll tell us something about what he has been contemplating. Um, so uh, please help me welcome Mike to 